Hey, everybody, and welcome to the very first of uh, what, what uh, will probably be many, but this is our very first interview segment for Side Hustle Economy, and also this will be episode one of the Side Hustle Economy podcast. So we're very glad to have you with us. And uh, my very special guest, I'm very pleased to have, uh, particularly since it's our very first one, uh, I, there's nobody I could think of better to uh, come on this journey and, uh, and you know, be here with me as we either uh, make this thing great or, uh, you know, succumb to technical difficulties. But I have, uh, I have a good feeling about it. So we've got Brian Bodenhammer coming to us from uh, Indianapolis. Uh, um, yeah. Brian, you're still, you're still there. Uh, we're just outside of it. But yeah, yeah for, for all intents and purposes, yeah, we're in Indy. So uh, it's cold here in New York, and Brian was just telling me uh, before the show started how cold it is uh, there. How cold was it last night, Brian? Nine below. <laughs> so you see this protest beard until it gets warmer, it stays on. <laughs> yeah. well, you're going to need to, uh, unless this weather changes or breaks, uh, uh, you're going to need to grow that beard a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger, I think. Well, I had it grow, growing pretty good in November. Did the Movember thing, and yeah. it was in pretty good. But uh, I think the better solution is just move south, <laughs> so we don't have to deal with it. That's, that's becoming more and more reasonable, and uh, it, it, this whole snowbird thing that the older folks do, uh, that's really making, making a lot of sense. So it's definitely something that uh, I think we're going to be considering. That's my mom, six months out of the year. But that's great. I, I I get it. I finally get it. You know, why do you want to you know, I get it now. So I wanted to have uh, Brian on, um, particularly because of his expertise when it comes to networking. You know, I've known Brian and Deb almost, we're coming up on 10 years. It's you know, yeah. like eight to nine window. And uh, we met through a network marketing opportunity that neither one of us are with uh, anymore. But uh, we met there. We had a great time. Uh, made some great connections, and um, you know we're both we both work you know different opportunities, but we're always looking for an opportunity to work together. Um, whether it's uh, network marketing or uh, other types of businesses we've looked at together, right. and now what we're doing here in uh, side hustle economy, you know Brian is one of the one of our founding members, um, but a lot of the a lot of the networking stuff we learned together in this original. Uh, group and Brian has continued to just take it further and further um, and so I continue to learn a tremendous amount from Brian when it comes to networking so Brian I wanted to um, I wanted to lead off with you know I know that you have uh, you've put together a really great networking uh, a local networking uh, group, yeah. um, where you are and it's something that we've spoken about duplicating in New York and the possibility of, of having them in, in other places. So would you take a couple of minutes and just uh, talk to us about what you're doing uh, with, uh, with the group there? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for the introduction. And, uh, you know, Deb and I feel the same way about you and Kat, as you mentioned. And, you know, of all the things that came out of that first networking company that we did uh, was the friendship we made with you and Kat. And uh, I think that's the most valuable thing that came out of that. But um, talking about the networking group, I was member of several different groups. You know, everybody knows b and I. I went to a couple of B&I meetings, and it just wasn't for me. It was too structured and too formal, and you really couldn't build those connections at that. Um, I went to a group here in Indianapolis called Rainmakers, and it was like if you were a new person coming to a first meeting, everybody just swamps you. And you had this little blue dot. So they knew who to go after. <laughs> so it was like sharks to chum. <laughs> and you couldn't move. And it was never about you. It was about them. You know, here's my card. And, you know, here's, what, here's how you can help me and all that. They didn't take the time to learn about you. And um, there's some other groups I was part of. And <clears throat> I finally got fed up. And I said, if this isn't working, I know enough. You know, Ross and I have learned enough that – I could strike out on my own. So I went and I talked to three or four people and two people showed up and we started a group about four, almost five years ago this coming May. And it's had its ups and downs and we've had large groups, we've had small groups and 
you know, one time we were down to four <laughs> and we didn't think we were going to last, but then we grew up to 10 and then we decided to stop charging fees and that opened up a whole new world. <clears throat> now, when you don't charge fees, it, there's less skin in the game. So people tend to think, so you got to set expectations with that. And um, so what we did is we based it on no like, and trust, which everybody should know about. I think everybody who's watching that, again, that was something that say that again. What no like and trust. No like and trust. Right. Okay. And then I took it a step further. And uh, I started something called Bob and Tom. And Bob is best of breed, top of mind. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anybody taking notes out there? Yeah. Best of breed. Not necessarily the best person you know, but the, the person that you know that if you give them a referral, they're going to follow up with it and take care of that person like, like it's their own. Um, and then top of mind. We all know people are top of mind, but they're not always the best of breed. You know, it's, those are the people that you, you know who they are right away, but you would never want to do business with them. So why would you refer other people to them? Right. So you want the combination, the best of breed, no like and trust, and then top of mind. So that's the Bob and Tom and KLT, for lack of a better word. Um, and that way, and with my group, <clears throat> or our group, I should say, it's industry exclusive. Because that way you avoid a lot of confrontations, like why didn't you give me the referral versus them? Now, you don't have to do that. But if you're going to meet often enough, that's the best way to do it. Our, our group meets weekly. Mm -hmm. So having one person per category makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're only going to meet once a month, invite everybody, you know. Um, but if you're going to meet on a regular basis, once a week or every two weeks, uh, I suggest doing it uh, industry exclusive. Um, you got to seek to understand you're really going to use your ears more than your mouth, which is the way it's supposed to be because you got two ears, one mouth. Um, and uh, that's how you build your tribe. And listen, listen with empathy. I like it. I, I like that very much. Now, if somebody... What, what would you say it was like a pitfall if somebody wanted to start a local networking group? What what are some of the what are some of the pitfalls that they might come across? Well, a couple times we were trying to build a group as fast as we could, so we invited people that were, weren't really good fits, and they were very um, uh, they were hunters instead of farmers. <laughs> yeah. If you guys know what I mean, you know what I mean with that, Ross. It's, you're building, you're trying to build relationships. That's versus right. taking a gun out and going, bang, I got a guy. Bang, I got a guy. Got a guy. And, and you're not trying to get people. You're trying to build the relationships. You're trying to build a culture where they know that they can trust you. And when you don't have that, whoever starts the group <laughs> has to be the fall guy. They got to go to that person saying, hey, look, this isn't a good fit for all of us. you know." And I think you know why. Because they know. They really know. Um, I've had one person when I told them, they, they yelled at me in the middle of a restaurant. And I said, you know, that's kind of why we're not asking you to, to, to stay with us. Another person sent an email to everybody else in the group and said, Brian said this, and he's trying to destroy the group. When three of the people that were in the group actually asked me to kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, it, it's, it's pretty, just be transparent with what you're doing and invite the right people. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely um, that was definitely something like even starting this little group, uh, side hustle economy. You know, we went through. I've got fifteen hundred people on my friends list. Kat's got eighteen hundred people, but we went through and we really drilled down and and picked people who we thought we were going to be who were going to be a big a good fit, rather than either just dumping everyone in there. Click to add. Yeah. you got to avoid that. Yeah, and then and. Believe me, every, every, everybody hates that. And somebody puts you in a group and you're not a for it or they haven't asked you about it. Everybody right. hates that. So we kind of did that uh, no like and trust and a little bit of the best of breed top of mind, even with the original invites to those, yeah. those founding members that came in first. And, you know, we want to build a great big group, but maybe it's better that we make sure that we have the right people uh, in here now. Um, and that's, you know, you, you just confirmed it for me. So, um, what are you reading now? Um, actually, got a couple of books. I just finished the Potter, the um, T.D. Jakes book, um, Destiny. Mm -hmm. You guys have seen this. Yep. Um, 
I got this at Barnes and Nobles for seven bucks. It's originally priced at twenty five dollars. You can always go to Barnes and Nobles and find great deals. I bought that on a fluke because I've heard of TD Jakes, you know, and they do a lot of reading anyway. You know that you probably read more than I do, but um, it's talking about destiny, it's stepping into your destiny, and and uh, uh, God's calling for you because God has a plan for all of us. Without getting too uh, religious on some people who are more secular, but um, God has a calling for you, and it's your job to step into your destiny. And you got to work. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone here, um, all massive action comes over here, right? Right. And uh, um, that's really what it talks about. And it was good timing because I was starting to plan my year out. And reading this book as I'm planning my year out, there was a lot of things that applied. Um, so that's what I, and I just finished that last week. And so now I got a couple other books. <clears throat> We'll talk more about some of this other stuff. But this is the John Maxwell book, No Limits. It's one of his newer books. I'm just now getting into that. And then um, I always thought this would be a good idea. It's a, kind of a daily reading, daily guide, daily guide to post for 2012, 2018. So I'm doing that. And uh, my goal this year is to read 36 books. All so, right. Three, so three books a month. Well, you uh, you mentioned John Maxwell, and I know you have something uh, really exciting going on with that. So, um, why don't you, you know you you've told me about it, but why don't you uh, speak to the larger group about uh, your John Maxwell training? Okay, well, John Maxwell is considered the guru of leadership development. There's a lot of people who do. We're gonna have to pause this. Just hold it, hold it right there. Eden Environmental. All right, very good. I'll take care of it. You got it. Mm, bye bye. All right, so we'll uh, we'll edit that out. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, I'm gonna have uh, to figure out. I'm gonna have to remember to turn the phone off. All right, so let me just let me roll it back then. Sure. Brian, you talked about uh, you you mentioned John Maxwell, and I know you have some <laughs> really exciting things going on with uh, John Maxwell certification. So right. why don't you talk to us about uh, about that? Okay. Well. I think a lot of us know there's a lot of certification programs out there. I recently saw one, Les Brown is doing one. Uh, Tony Robbins is always doing certifications. Um, one of our mentors, Eric Worre, has doing certification now, I think. Og Mandino, Jim Rohn, all these guys do certifications. So you kind of have to deal with what's congruent to your beliefs. And uh, John Maxwell, I was reading about him. And what I like about him is he uses both faith and secular lessons uh, he's a former minister, so of course he is faith-based, but and he does a lot of that. And one of the things about John Maxwell is he works with nonprofit groups. He works with kids. Um, he goes and does uh, works with uh, uh, groups all over the world. It's a thing called Equip that Ross that you I think would touch your heart a little bit. But he also works with large groups, small groups, businesses, building cultures, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I read about this, and the certification is not cheap but it's also a good investment. And I was part of all these network marketing companies and I love network marketing. I think it's a great business, but you really got to work your face off and it doesn't end. I mean, you got to work it for 10 years. Yeah. It's just like a job I and mean, we both know that. And I think a lot of people watching us know that. So being a former teacher, you know, I taught history for a few years, took five years to get my degree, taught for five years and I really, didn't like the politics of it. So I wanted to do something to get back to working with kids and working with nonprofits, helping teach culture. So John Maxwell filled all those, all those areas. And so that's kind of why I got into it. Signed up last October, mm -hmm. um, October of 2015. Um, not going to go into a lot of details for some reasons or another. I wasn't able to actually get into it. So this February, we're going in for a certification. And, um, it's back to teaching, like I said, working with kids, working with teachers, working with businesses, teaching cultures. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do a mastermind using a certain book. If I can find it here. It's called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. It's this book. Now, this is the, this is the original book. I've actually have like four copies of it now. Uh, some of them I'm giving away to or selling to people who sign up for the mastermind. Um, 
but get the revised edition because some things are different in the revised edition than they are in the original. So if you go to like, you know, a deep a discount bookstore, make sure you get the, get the revised edition, the new edition. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a seven week program, go through all 21 laws. We're going to do three laws at a time and the groups are going to be small. So Ross, if you have some people that you'd like to work with and you know, your top leadership people, mm -hmm. It's seven or eight of them, and that'll be one group. Okay. And then um, we'll get other groups, and we'll do as many groups as we have to to fill the needs. Um, the cost is pretty minimal. Um, I'm not going to charge you for the class. We're going to ask you to buy the book, and then make sure you read it. And it's going to a bad, really bad way to describe it as a book club. You know, you're going to read the three chapters, and then I'm going to send you a guided reading to, along with it. You get to fill in the blanks, okay. you know, and then everybody's going to get a chance to say, hey, first chapter is called Law of the Lid, which basically states that you can't teach people who are at a higher level of you than, than you are, okay? If they're at a higher level and you're here, it's kind of hard for you to teach that person about things they know better than you, Yeah. right? Um, when it comes to pest control or if it comes to – building a nonprofit, I couldn't do that. I couldn't teach you anything about that because you've got yellow boots and you had Eden Cares before that. And thank you for including me in that. And we got to see a little bit of that when you're doing it. But getting back to the topic is, that's the first, that's the first law. So that's the very first one we'll do. We'll, we'll send you a questionnaire before we get started. So we're gonna have you rank yourself in all 21 laws and then ask you when's the best time. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the best days because you're avoiding the weekends. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it in the middle of the day, that's fine. If you want to do it in the evening, that's fine. We'll do it on Zoom for you guys. Um, I have people in California, um, Alabama, and Wyoming, actually, who are interested in doing it too. Um, and then all the people around here in Indianapolis. I've got probably 12 people want to do it. So. We're going to get that going here in the next couple of weeks. My original goal was to have first seven weeks done before I went to Florida, the weekend after uh, Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to get there. So we may have to take a break and then pick up the week after that, or we'll find time to do it whatever day. Well, so, okay. so, that's that's um, so uh, I spoke to Brian, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but Brian is gracious, uh, graciously uh, agreed to, open this up to members of the side hustle economy. Right. So if you would like to be a part of the uh, 21 laws of leadership mastermind, um, I would say to drop a comment below this video, um, uh, you know, reach out to us on the post and we'll get you into a group. It'll be seven or eight, like Brian said, um, and we'll work through the materials. I will definitely be in, uh, in one of the groups there. So, um, you know, leave a comment if you want, to, if you'd like to be a part of it. And uh, Brian will lead us through the 21 laws of leadership. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. So we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to wrap up in a minute, but I wanted to, um, again, thank you, Brian. And, and, you know, you mentioned Eden Cares and Yellow Boots. Um, you know, Yellow Boots is our nonprofit here in Staten Island. And uh, nobody is a better uh, cheerleader or promoter for uh for yellow boots than uh than brian and deb and i, I appreciate that very much you know uh, brian and deb after hurricane sandy they drove how many hours i think it was 12. yeah 12 but hours we indianapolis drove to got into pennsylvania turnpike slept a couple hours drove the rest of the way yep. you guys gave me some bagel and some more issues said let's go <laughs> we worked for three straight <laughs> Um, I, I gotta tell you, you know, there's a video. If you guys want to go on YouTube, you can see the video <laughs> of that. Um, well, there's a couple of things, and I was going to get to that. Um, you know, Brian and I are are very competitive. I I, I think, and and uh, there was a there was an opportunity a few t few years back where Brian and and Deb were a part of a a, a challenge, a, a fitness challenge that they won. And you know, I told them from the beginning that they were going to win. But as a little bit of encouragement, you know, we uh, I don't call it that way, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did some good-natured uh, ribbing and poking, and there were some videos and 
there may have been some photoshopped images that uh, went back and forth. Yeah, but, right. I don't uh, even know how to Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I heard video can be Photoshopped. I drew a line in the sand and um, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll link it below because it's funny to see, but uh, they, they had a goal, they mapped out their goal and they achieved their goal and ended up going to Hawaii, uh, all expenses paid with the company and the leadership there. And, you know, that was a, that was an amazing thing to, to see. And, you know, we got to, um, we got to be in, in Salt Lake city when they were announced as at the winners and as the winners, I've got video of that too. I can link, uh, link below and Kat and I were up in the, up in the cheap seats, screaming our heads off when, uh, when these guys came out in their uh in their personalized track suits and and uh, and the kicks and all that uh but no uh, you know brian and deb they've been great friends to us uh great supporters um you know in, in a whole bunch of endeavors so um it was a real pleasure to have you on the very first episode of the side hustle economy uh video and podcast uh so if you're finding this online uh, you can find our group at facebook.com forward slash side hustle economy. You could also go uh, uh, bit.ly ly forward slash she group. And you can find us that way or just search it on um, actually side hustle economy.com as well. You can find us there. So until next week, we are signing off. Thank you, Brian. Hey, uh, real quick, if you want to see the thing about the Geist Networking Launch Club, it's what we call our group. It's on Facebook. Look at it there. And, oh, uh, what, what, what should they search? Geist Networking Launch Club. Spell Geist? Geist, G-E-I-S-T. Geist, okay. Geist, Geist Networking Launch Club. And uh, uh, it's an open group. We have a, we have a, a secret group for just members. But you can go on there and look that up too. Uh, but Again, just really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to talk about this. Uh, I think the John Maxwell thing is something everybody can use, whether you want to be a member of it or you just want to get, get some information and uh, help your leadership skills and tell your friends about it. And yeah. uh, like I said, we'll do as many groups as it takes. And then there's some other things after that. So thank you very much, Ross. That's awesome. All right. So, yeah, don't forget, if you'd like to be a part of the pod for the John Maxwell uh, 21 Laws of Leadership, drop a comment. And we'll get you. Uh, we'll get you set up, and yep. we'll see you again.